Another toxin that we talk to people an awful lot about is mercury. How much of a concern is that? That's a great concern. It, is, it travels in the atmosphere. Uh, estimates are that once it's released into the atmosphere, it can travel up to two and a half years really? in there before dropping out. Uh, the area with the highest dropout rate is actually the Arctic. And polar bears have the highest level of uh, mercury of all land animals. And it's not the fish they eat and the animals they eat. It's because it drops out in that atmosphere there. And so they get it because there's no dentists sticking, you know, amalgams and polar yeah. bears as far as I know. When you do uh, cremation of someone, mercury goes up in the air if it's not protected, uh, if they have dental amalgams. Uh, there's so much in coal. They're really trying to clean it up now. But there's still residual amounts that get out there. And it is an extreme neurotoxin. You know, the American Medical Association says no amount of lead is allowed in any person, especially children, should have no levels. And yet they don't have the same guidelines for mercury, and yet mercury's tenfold more mm -hmm. toxic than lead. Does that, does, if, if someone has an amalgam filling, mercury filling, does that uh, stay toxic throughout the, the lifespan of that filling, or does it, does it decrease at all? Well, if you look at a video from the University of Calgary that you can find online, it shows the outgassing yeah. of a mercury amalgam for a long period. As long as it's there, it's continually outgassing. So the longer it's in, the more damage it can do, especially if you're genetically predisposed not to detoxify naturally. There's a gene, the apolipoprotein E, mm -hmm. that if you have a 4-4, which means you have arginine on the SNPs, uh, you retain mercury. you got problems. Mm -hmm. You also have a higher risk for cardiovascular disease and Alzheimer's. If you're a 2-2 or a 2-3 like I am, thankfully, you, you detox mercury rather well and it doesn't seem to reside in your body. And those are cysteine uh, things on your genes. So that amino acid sitting there, it helps to remove it. So you have a lower risk of cardiovascular disease and Alzheimer's. So genetically, we have to look at each other. And that's something that I think is real important, is looking at the genes not to do things like prophylactically remove your breast because you might get breast cancer down the road. But are you a good detoxifier? And if you're a poor one, that would turn on those bad genes to create cancer. So do things to make it a lifestyle of changing and detoxifying your body.